Over 50,000 AT&T outages were reported uh, officially at 7 a.m. Eastern time this morning. Most issues uh, were happening in Houston, Chicago, Dallas, Los Angeles, and Atlanta. Uh, other, um, other systems were also affected. Verizon and uh, T-Mobile looks like, well, looks like they're, they're heading on the way back up, and most of it is fixed. They don't know what it was. But yesterday, there was a cyber attack on the phone systems, the cellular systems in Israel, and the Israelis are reporting that that was Iran that did that. I think this is only a matter of time before we see stuff that uh, will cause real problems. Um, there's a, a guy, John Acuff, he, he wrote today, uh, tweeted, once you've read one second after, cell phone outages carry a different weight. And it's true. If you've never read one second after, I highly highly recommend it. It was written by William Forstian, and uh, he he tells a story about what happens one second after an EMP. And it, I mean, you will, it will open your eyes into how dependent we are. And this was written years ago. And at the time, I was like, oh my gosh, I never even thought of that. Oh man, yeah, that would no longer, you just don't think of it. Uh, and William's with us now to talk about the outage and, and <clears throat> attacks on on our infrastructure. Hi, William. How are you? Good morning, Glenn, and thank you for the kind words about my book. Oh, Still it's, selling strong. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um, so, um, William, the the attack on cell phones. Our cell phones go down, and I think a lot of America they go into detox immediately. They're just like, I don't know what to do. Um, but this is something we don't know about today, but this is, is something that we know our Department of Homeland Security is saying they are waiting for cyber attacks. It's a matter of, of uh, when, not if, anymore. And they're preparing. Well, you, what? Go ahead. You know, Glenn, uh, my college, Montreal College, has a strong cybersecurity training program. And I'll, I'll go in their lab and just sit there sometimes. Half hour later, I walk out scared to death. Because, <laughs> uh, because if you saw the number of attacks, incoming attacks on our infrastructure, on our military, it's unrelenting. We don't even know if some of them have broken through, put sleepers into them, and are waiting to uh, hit. This is just a foretaste of the future. So <clears throat> tell me what you think is most likely and how it will affect us and what we sh how we should prepare for it. Well, first of all, if our cell phones really went dead, my daughter would have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, I think a lot of our children <laughs> our would. would. Yeah. Uh, the whole college. But uh, number one, of course, is cyber attack. Uh, that's unrelenting from Russia, any number of bad players. Uh, number two, actual physical oh, Wait, 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 wait. Cyber attack could include our water system, our electrical oh. grid, or would do you think it would be all of it or some of it? It could be targeted to a specific or in a general offensive, like a, what I would call a first strike scenario, a widespread. For example, take where you are. Suppose water all across the board was shut down for 48 hours because that's all electronically controlled. What would happen to your town in one day if all water was turned off? Wouldn't be good. Just, it would be very bad within yeah, 24 to 48 hours. Yes. Uh, our, I'm mainly focused more on our electrical infrastructure. I've been doing a lot of work. I just talked with FEMA last week. Uh, that's, that's the bad one because if you lose electricity, yeah, everything. That's going. the fundamental building block. Then everything goes. Water, food, medical, all of it. All our distribution systems are gone. How prepared, I, I hate asking people questions like this who know, <laughs> how prepared are we? We're not. Okay. Uh, you know, it was, a, uh, and uh, let me point out. You're not improving my lot. mood much. <laughs> uh, in my talk with Southeast FEMA last week, these are there are a lot of good people working in that system. They're, they're not bad guys. 
And they say the number one thing is if only Americans would be prepared one month worth of emergency supplies on hand. That applies to everybody, whether you're living in an apartment in the city, have emergency water on hand, have food on hand, uh, charge your systems up, have a small cellar char- uh, cell phone charger. These are basic things, and 90% of Americans just blithely go along. It could be a very bad day. Don't you want to be prepared before rather than after? So if something like this happens, um, would we be, do you think we'd be in lockdown situation, or would you be able to travel, you know, to... Lockdown. Lockdown. If you lost your whole electrical grid, even just regionally, it would very quickly have to be a lockdown to avoid panic, uh, try and keep control on population. Uh, those people living in New York remember when Sandy hit 10 years ago. It got a little hairy there, even though tens of thousands of tons of emergency supplies were being moved in. If it had gone for two weeks, it would have been very bad. Yeah, my, um, saw uh, new, my, uncle used, you know, saw. my uncle used to work for, I, I don't know what department in, uh, in the military, but he did mm-hmm. some of the original studies on, you know, the after effects of war and crisis and, mm-hmm. uh, and everything else. And he said, generally speaking, you have 72 hours. If everything isn't restored in 72 hours, right. you're done. You're done. That, and, he is dead on the mark. 72 hour max. Again, if you have a, everybody listening to if you have a month's worth of emergency supplies on hand, and it doesn't cost that much. Yeah. You can at least hunker down and be safe while the crazies are running up and down the street. So if we had, you know, there's, it's, it's strange. Um, you know, I, I thought EMP is the worst thing <clears throat> that could happen it to is. us ever. Um, however, the more I see AI and everything else, it may in the end, and I'm saying 50 years from now, if AI has gotten out of control, an EMP might be our best friend. It will kill millions of people, but it would release a slavery if, God forbid, you know, I'm in science fiction world here, but God forbid AI went, went bad. I mean, it's uh, the well, ones and zeros well, well, would have to be confused. Well, the EMP scenario, which is indeed the worst, according to two congressional studies, which I base my novels on, I've got four books out on the subject, 80 to 90 percent of the population would be dead a year later. And people go, what? Again, no food, no water, no medical supply, no command and control. People die and they die very quickly. You know, when you when I when I read this is years ago, one second after you you know, you got to the 30 day mark and you started mm-hmm. talking about what was coming, you know, in the next. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I've never even thought of that. I mean, you're just we're just not prepared even mentally to what would come. Explain the 30 day mark. OK, uh, when I started working on the book, I went I interviewed numerous different sources. I remember two in particular going to my chief of police talking with him about it, and I say, okay, the grid goes down. What do you do first? He actually picked up the phone, and then he said, oh, blank, my phones don't work. I said, yeah, now what are you going to do? The other interview was with the pharmacist. At the end of one hour talking with her, she was in tears, and I down there yeah. was in tears as well. Because think about your pharmacy. You go in, you get a medication, they put it into a computer, and a day later, it comes back out. Or nursing homes, they're dead. The vast majority of people in nursing homes will be dead within a week. This, it's a scary scenario, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And uh, especially in today's world where we have so many people with technology that was not mm-hmm. even around when you wrote the book uh, or it was mm-hmm. an infant stage. And now, you know, we know these attacks are happening all the time. Uh, we, we know there are many countries that would like to take us down and our Achilles heel, you know, is we don't live in caves far from it. And if, if you are going against a, a cave dwelling nation, if they can knock out the electricity, we're dead. They know how to live. Um, and it's, it's not good. Not good. Well, You know, uh, in the EMP scenario, which I wrote about one second after, 
Uh, I had North Korea as the main player, most likely. We'll never really know. And it was pointed out, yeah, okay, they screwed us over. We turned them back into the Stone Age. And my main character at the end said, what difference does that make for us? We're dead anyhow. Mm. What good is revenge at this point? Yeah, a third world country like North Korea, the leadership will just go 2,000 feet underground. Yeah. And wait it out. Won't matter. What happens to us? Yeah. What happens to us? Well, Bill, it's always great to talk to you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, my girlfriend says that on a regular basis. Oh, you're yeah. so cheerful today. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if she's ever said what my wife has said. We have gone to a party one time, and she knocks on the door, and then she looks at me just before the door's open, and she went, do not make anyone cry. <laughs> I know. I know. I've done it. <laughs> I have too. God bless you. Thank you so much, Bill. I appreciate it. And keep up the good work you when you're getting the word out. Thank you. God bless you. One Second After is the name of the book, and he's got follow-ups after that. It's a must-read. It is, it's a fascinating book and fun to read. I mean, fun to read uh, as a novel. It's fun to read. Um, and you'll think of things, and it will help you on... It's why, really, honestly, I'm like, I got to get an x-ray machine. I got to get something because nothing works. Nothing works uh, if if this all would happen unless it's, you know, protected. But anyway, um, check it out. It's one second after.